Um, all right, I'll, I'm gonna go back in my pipe. What are you gonna do? Just be alone for a little while, I think. Play, play some Mario. <laughs> it's -a me, Eric Jumper. I live in here. Da -na -da -na -na. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the Build It Vlog. Today we are with Rosso Constructors. Wow. Yeah, one of the very first companies we ever worked with many years ago. Dylan Stevens paid me a whole $2,000 to come out and photograph his operations and I thought I was the wealthiest, most successful kid in the land. Here we are many years later at a site development project about 30 minutes north of Nashville, Tennessee in Portland. No, not Portland, Oregon. Portland, Tennessee. Uh, commercial project, they have just recently dug in on this one, a lot of really nice dirt. It doesn't look like there's there's any rock, there's no drilling, so it's straight dirt. They are, which is actually quite unique uh, to this region. So they're moving a bulk of the material with tractors and pans. They have a case tractor with a KTEC pan on it, and then two MTS quad track tractors with MTS pans that we're really excited to show you. That's a very cool tractor. Huge fan of MTS, John Moyna and company. Awesome business. So we're excited to highlight those. And then they have a 349 loading 745 haul trucks towards the back, which is also a lot of fun. So here we have a Caterpillar D4 bulldozer as you may have noticed, their dozers are a little bit different of a color. Black Ops edition, which is pretty neat, pretty unique. Rosso has been slowly painting their entire fleet black, so that's cool. It's important to note, you can't just use any kind of air freshener in a black machine. You must use a black ice air freshener. This is the only approved air freshener that works for a black machine. Any other type of air freshener is actually against OSHA standards and you will be arrested. So this week is special because, again, we are on a five-day bender to see job sites around the United States. Uh, what is it, what are we calling this? Partner Vlog Week, right? That's kind of a lame. It's kind of lame. A working title. Uh, hold on. Joe, what are we calling this week? Up until this point, we called it the Partner Vlog Week. Boring. We need, we need oh, some more. Yeah, yeah, we need some creativity. Um, operation Exhaustion. It's operation Exhaustion? Operation Air Freshener. A lot of good men lost for that. Operation Black Ice. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> After a quick workshopping session here on the job site, we have decided that this week is called Operation Black Ice. Behind me, it looks like they're cutting. This is most likely a building pad here, and they're cutting just on the other side of the building pad. 
So he is loading trucks, but he's also cutting roughly to grade while he's doing so. So it's not necessarily just straight up bulking. He's loading trucks, moving really quickly. This is Dylan, he's an awesome operator, but he's also hitting rough grade while he does it. So it's two skills. Anybody can load trucks pretty quick. That's a skill that's pretty quick to, to learn just at face value. But thinking ahead like this, building a job, cutting grade, it's a lot more complex. They have these 745 and 740 haul trucks. This is a 349 next gen excavator with roughly a five yard Craig bucket on it. And as one truck is getting loaded, the next one's backing in. Backing in, it's not ideal, obviously, but this is a tighter cut. They have no choice but to back in. That's the best way to do it. And you're not really losing any production because as one truck's getting loaded, again, the next one's backing in. So the excavator, as you can see, is always moving. That, and that's the key. That's where you're making your money. So as long as the excavator is always moving, always loading that dirt into trucks, you're good to go. So let's go talk to Dylan and stick a GoPro in there to show you his perspective. Got a little bit more detail on the project. It's a 600,000 square foot building. The pad is essentially a majority of the site out there where the dozer's at. He said they have about another six foot and then they're peeling all of this back. There's quite a bit of cut in here. It's all about cut fill, balancing your site. So they're cutting primarily on this side of the site. They're hauling to the fill on the other side of the site. Within a few weeks, they started two weeks ago. Within a few weeks, You'll see your whole beautiful building pad start to emerge. They'll put rock on the pad. They'll turn it over to the concrete guys to form that foundation. And then they'll get going on the utilities. They have about 7,000 feet of water line. There's storm, there's sewer tie-in from the existing road. So all of that's gonna get started after the, uh, the mass excavation is done, which is what we're seeing today. It's interesting, they have three different styles of earth moving on this site. You have articulated trucks and excavator, obviously one of the proven methods to move dirt. Dylan is just slinging loads over there, just moving and grooving. And then we have MTS tractors and pans. They're 28 yard pans pulled by quad track, rubber track tractors built by Mobile Track Solutions out of Iowa. And then we have that Case farming tractor pulling a K-Tech pan that's a 33 yard pan. He said the MTS tractors are doing really well because they're fast. So while they're 28 yard pans that they're pulling right now, a little bit smaller than the K-Tech they have, they're still a little bit more productive because they can move a little faster with those quad tracks. You'd think that the quad tracks would not hold up all that well, but they're remarkably efficient. They're unbelievable tractors. And the advantage of those over the tractor wheel scrapers are if anything gets wet, the wheel tractor scrapers are toast. They're gonna to be spinning their wheels almost immediately. There's no traction when they're working on wet material. But these quad track tractors, because they're spreading that weight over a much greater surface area, they can work in much softer conditions, which is why you'll see them a lot more frequently in the Midwest than in those drier regions like Southern California. There's the, they have a John Deere tractor out here too with an MTS box blade and roller. And so you'll see that guy cruising around where the trucks are hauling, where the scrapers are hauling to tidy up the haul road by dragging that box blade along. So grading like a grader and simultaneously rolling it out with that roller behind it. There might be some rain coming. So they'll also take that roller and as we've explained before, they'll roll the, where they've started to fill. And so they'll seal it off before that rain comes. 
which will help them get started faster because that rain will it's, it slick off rather than percolate into the ground. So right now we have Dylan over here grabbing the dirt and he's gonna be hauling, the, the trucks are gonna be hauling from here to over there, which is the fill location. So I put an extra lens in my pocket typically. Uh, I have one and then I have a second one. The problem is I just look down to grab my second lens to get a shot and uh, not there, not there. So I checked the only two places I've been. One, out there in the open where nothing is. I could have just walked over there, grabbed it, no problem. Or two, immediately next to the 349, where he just dug through five or 10 minutes ago. I have not found it, so I'm assuming it was next to the 349 where he just dug through. And so it was taken into the bucket, put into a truck, and my two $2,500 lens is now part of the fill of this project. Do I look like an idiot? Yeah, yeah I do. Look at my little saggy little fanny pack on my right hip. However, at the same time, he puts his lenses in his pocket. See this? That lens ain't going nowhere. Okay, everybody. Nobody panic. We found it. It was on this here pallet of water bottles where I did the intro this morning. No, where you did the outro yesterday. It's, it's right here on this pallet of water bottles where I did the outro for yesterday's video. But I did it today, so. Why would I be confused on that? So clear. We know what we're doing, we're professionals. Of course I'm a professional. Of course I set it down right here. Of course I did all of this just for the, the suspense created within this video. We needed to spice things up a little bit. Consider it spiced. <sighs> all right, now that it's spicy, let's go, let's go annoy Tony. <laughs> Actually, can you move your truck? Yeah. Just park right down, right on this lip here. If you back up, or hell, if you want to pull over the Connex, I'll come get you. After I pointed it out. Oh, we're all fucked. Once you get a college degree, you park in the way nonstop. That's why I said you must have been a foreman or a senior You see most of it. We got some guys down here sitting by. We're with uh, one of Rosso's boss mans, Tony Strong. They're laying, this is the first stick of pipe on the whole job. Yep. Very first stick of pipe on the whole job. They're starting with Storm. And they're putting in their gravel right now for the second stick of pipe. 42 on the whole inch job. RCP. 42 inch RCP. Hello. We just finished filming Watch Me Work, and today it sounds like there's gonna be... It's fixing to rain like hell here. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get out of here. Rain delay, a lot of rain coming pretty quick here. On an earth moving job like this, it's key to watch the weather, and the weather's saying, hey, we got some water for you. So what is happening is, as I've explained, the tractor's over there sealing off the fill. So they're gonna seal off this whole area with the roller there. They're gonna park up the equipment. 
and they're going to quit while they're ahead. Because if it, was, if it was to start raining and they don't have it all sealed up, it's going to cause an absolute disaster. And while they might get a little bit more dirt today moved, it's going to set them back in the future. So they're thinking ahead. They just parked everything up. And I guess that's a vlog, Chell. Yeah, that's a vlog. <laughs>